Yeah, loosen it. <laughs> All right, I guess we're on. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to, to our talk. My name is Carl Baldwin. I've been working with Neutron for nearly about three years now. Um, last year, I guess about a year and a half ago, I was uh, made a core reviewer in the Neutron team, and more recently, uh, I've been filling the position of L3 lieutenant in the team and also a member of the Neutron Drivers team. And I'm talking today with uh, Kyle McInnes and Miguel Laval, uh, and I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Hey, so my name is Kyle McInnes. Uh, I'm a software engineer with HP. I started the Designate project maybe four years ago at this point. Up until this cycle, I've been the PTL. Uh, finally, finally handed the reins over to somebody else this cycle. Um, I guess I'll leave it at that, Miguel. So my name is Miguel Laval, and I'm a, a Neutron developer with uh, the Linux Technology Center of IBM. I've been working with uh, Neutron over the past three years, doing uh, testing first with uh, Tempest, and now as a, as a Neutron developer. Excellent, thanks. So our, our talk today is about it's more about getting three OpenStack projects to work together and to communicate. Um, but it's about it, the end goal that, that we were after is really pretty simple. Uh, it's just getting your instance by name. And uh, I thought it was kind of ironic. Uh, we walked in, and, and Miguel had a, had a piece of paper with an IP address for the machine that we're going to do the demo on. Um, so I said, you know, we got to get this done and deployed everywhere so that we don't have to bring this paper with us anymore. Uh, I wanted to start today by just going over the background, what motivated us to get started on this. I, it was actually about two and a half years ago, I think, that, that I thought of doing this. And what happened was I had just started working on Neutron in HP's public cloud. And we were having good success standing it up, and I, I was starting to boot VMs and play around with them for various things, even, even a few personal things I was playing around with on these VMs. And I noticed uh, that whenever I type sudo anything, you know, sudo id, sudo make me a sandwich, I don't, you know, whatever, um, the first thing it did was it spit out this error, sudo unable to resolve host in the host name. I thought, well, that's strange. Why can't I get rid of that? Um, I could get rid of it with a host file entry. Um, but VMs in the cloud, they come and go. You know, uh, so you might fix it on one, boot up another one, and, it's, and, and the problem's there again. So I started digging into it. And I actually found that there were, there were a number of other things that happened, because uh, DNS didn't know the name of my instance. Uh, and, and Miguel put a few of those others here. So I started digging into it, and I realized that, well, what the problem is, is Nova has an instance name. You say Nova boot, and you, uh, you give it the instance name. But that stops at Nova. Uh, Neutron doesn't know about that name. But Neutron's the one that has the DNS server in, that, that's local, the local DNS server on the tenant network. And since, Nova, or since Neutron doesn't know the name that Nova has, it makes up its own. It, does, uh, it takes the IP address, replaces dots with dashes, and, and sticks on some bogus domain on the end. Um, but it's not very useful. It's actually not any more useful than the IP address itself, uh, just, just being a strict mapping from the IP address. <coughs> and so I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if the two projects talked? And, uh, and then later on, I was actually in HP Cloud. I was using, um, I think it's a predecessor of Designate that was deployed in HP Cloud. Is that right? There was an internal tool deployed beforehand. There was one that I was able to use with HP Cloud anyway. And I, I actually uh, took my, my own personal domain, and I put my DNS up in it and played around with the API a little bit. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if I could boot my instance and not have to take that information manually and plug it in with an API or, or uh, through, the, through the web portal or whatever. And so I wrote up my first blueprint ever. 
uh, actually one for Neutron and one for Nova. And I took them to Atlanta and, and uh, talked to people. I found that people were pretty excited about it, um, but not quite excited enough to do anything about it. Um, so why did it get stalled for so long? We'll, we'll get into that a bit later. I wanted to hand over the, the talk to Miguel, who's going to talk about some of the technical part. OK. So the, the, the root cause of these uh, anomalies that Carl is uh, uh, explaining is the way DHCP is, the internal uh, neutron DHCP is implemented. And I'm not going to work, uh, walk through the, all, all the ports and all the, the connections there, but the main point that I want to make here is that, that when you have an instance and you have a port, that port uh, gets uh, DHCP service from, from, from the network node. Uh, there's a, for each network, there's a DNS mask uh, instance that provides DHCP ser uh, services and, um, and uh, DNS services to that, to that port. And for each, actually the name of the, the namespace is QD, QDHCP and then the UUID of the network. And, and for each network, you, you get uh, that, that uh, DNS mask uh, uh, instance. So, so what happens is that, that uh, when you create, whenever you create a port in, in Neutron Server, Neutron Server not, notifies the DHCP agent that a new port has been created. And at that point, the DHCP agent requests, the, through the RPC channel, requests the, the port information. And with that information, it creates a file uh, it updates a number of files that, that the, the DNS mask uh, uh, uses to, to, to come up with the DHCP allocation and the DNS, DNS uh, services for, for that port. And essentially, the, the DHCP agent updates the, fi the files and then uh, notifies the DNS mask that it needs to, to read the files again. And that's, that's how your neutron ports uh, get uh, DHCP ser uh, services and DNS uh, services uh, prior to, to Liberty. So essentially, the DHCP agent is, is creating these names. And as you can see in the uh, lower right uh, corner of the, 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 the slide, you can see that the name that the, the, the DHCP uh, agent uh, creates is host dash and then the, 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 uh, the IP address of the, of the port. And the same, the same thing with the, the, fully, the fully qualified domain name. It becomes host. The, 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 the IP address that, that was assigned to that port, and then the, the default domain for, for that uh, OpenStack instance. So now to Kyle. Thank you, Miguel. All right, so I wanted to give you a little bit of background on Designate itself. So what is Designate? What are the, the high-level components? What are the things you use it for, and so on? So 10,000-foot view. The simplest way of looking at Designate is we have a, quite a simple REST API that you're able to use to interact with your DNS data. Architecturally, we're pretty similar to Nova and Trove, the opposite of Zakar. So we don't implement a DNS server. We make use of existing ones. We'll tie into ParaDNS, Bind, third-party solutions like Akamai or Dynect. Um, so we, we don't require you to run your own global DNS infrastructure. You can instead use the API, use Keystone Authentication. <coughs> Sorry. Use all of that uh, OpenStack niceness, and then push all of that content out to a third party if you want. So the components. Um, we have uh, quite a number of components sitting there. We have the core ones being API, Central, Sync, uh, uh, Pool Manager, and MiniDNS. So basically, these all communicate over RPC, standard Oslo messaging services. They're all, they all aim to be do one task and do it well. So for example, the API service is just a shim to Central that understands REST. It doesn't do very much else. It understands how to validate the in incoming queries. It understands how to parse JSON. It understands how to return rendering errors and so on. It has no idea how to create a domain. It will pass off the command to, to designate central. Pretty much everything lives in here for designate. It's a core service. 
It is the only service that has write access to the database. Everything else is either read-only or no access. We have MiniDNS, which is a, it's a pure Python DNS server. So you would never point a customer at this. You would never point an end user at this. What you do is instead you point your PowerDNS or Akamai at it. PowerDNS, Akamai, Bind, they will slave the zone from us. So for simplicity, rather than reinventing the wheel for each DNS server, um, turns out there's a standard way of pushing zone content into DNS servers called a zone transfer. So we decided we were going to implement that in Python rather than implement something that we'll call RNDC and render zone files, something that we'll call PowerDNS's database, something that will sync with Akamai's API. So we decided to try and keep that simple. Next up, we have uh, Sync, which is the first attempt we had at doing an integration with Nova and Neutron. So Sync was uh, an event listener. It would sit and, on the Nova and Neutron uh, notification queues, the same queues that Celiometer would be listening to for events. Those events have a huge amount of information in them, including the instance names, the instance IPs, which port is attached to which instance. And given all of this information, you could correlate it and, and produce uh, a name, push it out to the DNS servers. It was fundamentally flawed uh, that there's no guarantee of delivery on these events. So you might get the port create, but the instance create, you might not get it. Uh, or worse, they might be totally out of order, they might be delayed massively, you might miss a delete. Uh, so it, it was quite difficult to make it really reliable. So we started looking and talking to Carl uh, two years ago or something about this. Uh, um, and finally, last main piece is the customer facing DNS servers. So we support more than Bind, ParaDNS, Akamai, and Dynect, but those are kind of the main ones that, uh, that people, people look at. So what can you use Designate for? Um, you've got all of these DNS servers, ParaDNS, Bind, Akamai. None of these things are multi-tenant. Um, so the first thing we do is create a, a REST API that allows you to take your single-tenant DNS infrastructure and share it among all of your projects without risk of one tenant uh, destroying or modifying another tenant's data. So beyond that, we act as a sort of a gateway uh, to third parties. So you can have one account with the likes of Akamai or Direct, and all of your projects will feed into that. We also have some more functionality, like let's say you've got an existing infrastructure inside. You've got Microsoft Active Directory running in your enterprise, and you really don't want to remove, move the Active Directory domain to designate. But you do want it to fan out to your, your global DNS infrastructure. So we can then slave from existing machines, from existing DNS servers, suck it into designate, and then push it out the far side to the DNS servers we manage. And finally, and most importantly, uh, it's about automating the DNS provisioning. So you're familiar with, at the end of the day, you want to stand up a new developer environment. You press a button, you get five VMs, a couple of Trove databases, Neutron LBAS, uh, all of this that magic just happens. Except there's no DNS. You're figuring out all these IPs. So by being able to have a DNS API there, you're able to integrate DNS into the workflow the same way you have um, the same way you have VMs, networks, firewalls, load balancers automated. Right. So I kind of start, touched on this one already, which is what is this sync thing? It's our old way of doing this. We're not going to remove it because there's still some value there. Um, but effectively, listens on the notification events. I actually covered all of this already, <laughs> except for uh, it's plugin based. So the interesting thing about it is you take all of these events in and you dispatch them to a plugin. The plugin can be customized to do whatever you like. Um, you might decide to, to have it go off and gather some extra data from some third party system and use that in deciding the name and so on. Um, and you can do that if the trade off of potential unreliability, potentially leaving stale data around because you miss a delete, potentially not creating it because you missed a create. Uh, if you're comfortable with that, then you can do some interesting stuff with it. OK, so at this point, I'm going to hand back over towards Miguel. Thanks so much. So now we are going to, uh, to review how we integrated uh, the, the different components here. And essentially, we, we took uh, two major steps. The first step was to fix the, the internal DNS anomalies that, that we already explained. And essentially, what we did is that, that 
we moved the generation of, of uh, the DNS assignment from the DHCP agent, we moved that to the neutron server. Now the neutron server generates that. And uh, we, added, uh, we added an attribute to the, to the API, uh, to, to ports. We added the, the, the DNS name attribute to, to, to ports. So that allows you to uh, specify the name that you want assigned to, to your port. And we made this optional. And essentially what happens is that we added a new uh, a neutron configuration uh, parameter. Uh, DNS domain that allows you to enable this functionality. If you don't specify that argument in your uh, neutron.conf, essentially you fall back to the previous behavior and nothing changes. But if you specify this, uh, this um, DNS domain uh, uh, parameter in your, in the, your configuration file, then you enable this, this functionality. So essentially what happens is you create the port, uh, the neutron server creates the DNS assignment, in the, for, for the port, as you can see in the, in the uh, middle of the, of the slide. And then when the DHCP agent uh, requests the, the port information, it gets that information from the, from the neutron server and assigns to the file that, that uh, the NS mask, mask uses, assigns th those names that, that were received from, from, from the neutron server. So now you as an API user, you have a control of the names that your ports are going to be assigned by the DHCP agent and the NS mask. Once we have that in place, we made a little change in, in, in Nova, and essentially that name is that, that Nova uses the, the Neutron, uh, uh, the neutron uh, client to create ports whenever you create an instance. So essentially what we did is what we are showing in the, in the left, left uh, side of the slide, Essentially now, uh, uh, Nova does a, a port create specifying using that DNS name attribute. And that D DNS na attribute comes from the host name, host name of the instance. So, so let's say that your instance is my underscore VM. That, that, that uh, name became sanitized to become uh, compliant with, with uh, DNS names and it becomes my-vm. And that, that name is sent to Neutron, and then we follow the, the path that, that I already explained. So essentially what ha what's happening is now, now in your uh, internal DHCP server, you are, you are getting the name of your instance. Your, your instance is, your port is known by the name of your instance by the NS mask. It's, it's only, now you're only getting one name because now the, that, the, the name, the DNS name of that port becomes your instance name. And, and with that, we go back to the explanation, that, that, uh, to Carl's explanation at the beginning of the presentation. And essentially we can see that all those uh, anomalies in the behavior of the different commands in your instance become so, uh, are solved. And the reason is that now, each one of those commands is really asking the DNS service, the DNS servers of the instance for the, for the fully qualified domain name of, of, of that, that instance, and that become, becomes solved. Go ahead. Um, how do you handle collisions? Like when many tenants call their instance foo, uh, there will be collision on foo.default domain, right? Mydomain.org. Well, remember that, that th this DNS mask instance, you have yes, a DNS mask per, per network. Okay, so this is just private. Yeah, so it's really not a non-issue from a tenant's point of view. Yeah, yeah the, the, that domain name is global. But you are going to, we are going to, you are going to share that domain name. But but keep in mind, right now I'm talking about the internal DNS, uh, internal neutrons DNS. So so bear with me for a, for a few minutes. So now, once we had that in place, we used that as a platform to, to go work with the, in the integration between Neutron, Nova, and Designate. And essentially, we, when we were planning this, we envisioned two use cases. The, case number, the use case number one is that where the DNS name and the DNS nom domain are associated with the instance or, or the port. 
So essentially what you do is you create, you create your, you, 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 you now can assign a, uh, a, dom a domain name to your, to your uh, uh, neutron networks. So there's, we also expanded the API with a new DNS domain attribute for, for networks. And you can have as many domains as you want. That, that domain name doesn't have to be the same domain name that we are using for the internal uh, DNS implementation. So now you go create a, a network, and that network has a DNS domain attribute. So far, so good. Next step is, let's say we create an instance, and that instance happens to be, ha happens to have a port in that, on that network. So what's going to happen is that, that uh, you, create, you create the, Nova creates a port, and that port has a DNS name specified by the name of the instance. And as you can see in the fully qualified domain name of, of the attribute, it, it got the domain name associated with the network. And now, you assign an external accessible uh, address to, you, to, your, to your port, a floating IP. What's going to happen is you, you cre create a floating IP associated to the port of the instance, and essentially what happens at that point in time is that Neutron now, the Neutron server, pushes that information to designate. And essentially what is going to happen is that we are going to uh, get two records in, in, in designate. We're going to uh, get a, an A record, with the, the, flo the, the floating IP address, and that, that floating IP address is associated with the name and the fully qualified domain name of your instance. And you also get a, a, a reverse look, a lookup record, a PTR, uh, again, with uh, the, the, the floating IP address and the, the fully qualified domain name of that instance. So that's, that's our use case number one. The, the other use case that we envisioned was, that, was one that, that we want, we want a, a name and a domain name associated with a floating IP, regardless of the instance that is connected to that, to, to that, to that, to that floating IP. So, so in, that, in that case, we also extend, for that case, we also extended the API with uh, two attributes for, for, for floating IPs. The, again, we have a DNS name and a DNS domain attribute for, for floating IP. And those attributes are going to override whatever is defined at the port and instance level. Even if you have a DNS name and DNS domain associated with that port, the, when when we, we create the floating IP and we push the information to, to, to designate, uh, the DNS name and DNS domain associated with the floating IP uh, override uh, whatever information might be there before. So as you can see here, I'm associating a my FIP name with my floating IP, and that's the information that gets pushed to, to designate in the A record and the, and the PTR record. How, how did we implement this? Well, essentially, we added a, a, a uh, external DNS uh, service uh, driver to, to, to the Neutron server. Uh, we wanted this to be uh, pluggable. So essentially, we, we defined an external DNS service class, which defines the abstract behavior of the, of the driver. And the plan is to have different implementations for, for, the, for this uh, driver. Uh, the, we also created the, the reference implementation based on, on designate, but there's plans to create other specific drivers for other external DNS services integrated to, to Neutron. So how do you configure all this? Well, essentially, again, you go to uh, Neutron.conf, and, and uh, in the default section, you specify the external DNS driver that, that you're using. It, right now, we only have designate. And we added a, a new designate uh, section specific for the de designate implementation, where you specify, um, first you specify the designate uh, endpoint, 
And then you specify the information for a admin user, an admin user and tenant. And the reason we do that is that the, the PTR records are created in a, um, under a, a, um, a admin user, and maybe Kyle cares to explain the technical reasons for that. You have lots of tenants sharing the same namespace, the same pointer domain, so you've got 255 at a minimum have to be in one domain, but those IPs are allocated individually to customers. So um, you can't allow a customer direct access to that zone. Yeah. So um, I was told to do that. I, I just implemented it. <laughs> so, uh, and and, and we, found a, we have a final parameter, which is allow reverse DNS lookup. Essentially, that, what that allows you is that we made the, the, the creation of the PTRs optional. Th there might be users who might not be interested in that. So, so we create an argument, a, a parameter that, that can be true or false and enables or disables that, that functionality. So since I like to live in danger and I want to add to the pressure that my VP is here, I want to attempt a uh, uh, live demo, see if uh, it works. So first of all, let's uh, let's see what instances we have in there. Uh, uh, can you see it from 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 from, from there? Okay. So it seems it seems it's it's visible. So as as you can see, I have a I have an instance already created in the, in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the screen, and essentially. What, what I did before creating this instance to that instance I associated a DNS domain name the, the, the mydomain.org so what I got from that is that So what I got out, out of that is that, that I have my DNS assignment with uh, the host name as my-vm and my fully qualified domain name as myvm.mydomain.org. So we can also see that um, in designate in my, in my domain, dot org essentially it's empty i don't have any i don't have any records at, at this point in time and in my um, ptr domain i don't have any records at this point in time so we're, what, what, what we are going to do is let's assign a floating IP to that, to the, to that instance port. And there we go. We got a, a, a floating IP associated, it, and the floating IP uh, ends with a Dot five. So let's see what happened in in uh, in designate. As you can see, we now have a, an A record with my uh, floating IP and my fully qualified domain name for, for for my instance. And if we go to the to the PTR domain.
we can see that, that we got a PTR record for, for, for my instance. So uh, it's important to mention that uh, this functionality is uh, half of this functionality is already in place in Liberty. Um, and the, 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 that, that's, that's the, in, the internal DNS uh, in integration. That's already in Liberty. And we are uh, looking to merge uh, the, the integration with uh, Designate in Mitaka 1. That's, that's the plan. So going back to, to the presentation, Is it full view? Full screen mode. Yeah. yeah. So we are going to. I we we we, we had a safety net here <laughs> with uh, screenshots, and now we want to share a little bit our experience of uh, uh, cross cross project collaboration. Yeah. Sure. Um, so having started this uh, over two years ago, uh, cross-project cr cross collaboration was, there was a rocky start. And I think I, w I wanted to talk a little bit about how that has improved in OpenStack um, since then and enabled us to get this done. Um, Miguel, you're, you're now serving, or you previously were serving as the, the liaison from between Neutron and Nova? I was, no, I was the liaison between Neutron and Tempest. Actually. Neutron and Tempest. That's right. It was um, Sean serving as the liaison. Correct. But, right. So the point is we've, um, we've created liaisons and uh, resources that we can use to help us work and collaborate between projects. And that's been really great. Uh, when I started out, that was less mature and not a resource that I, that I knew of or existed. I didn't think it existed at the time. Um, but it, so it, it started out rocky, and I was really pleased to find out that over time, it got a lot better. Um, so working with Nova, it's a very large project, and, and me being pretty new to OpenStack, new to Neutron, and to Nova, I found it a little bit difficult to navigate at first. Um, but now we've, we've improved that a lot. Uh, working with Designate was great. Um, I think a lot of the success of this project comes from uh, they created a very easy to use API, very easy to integrate. And also as a team, they were very excited to do this. Uh, you guys had made your attempt that, that you talked about. Um, slurping things from RabbitMQ. Uh, so you, uh, the Designate team was very keen to work with us on this and, and very helpful. Uh, they even uh, talked me out of a few complicated things that I wanted to do and it turned out to be completely unnecessary and just me overthinking things a lot. Uh, so that helped out a lot and I really appreciate that. Yeah, and, and, and in my case, I want to say that uh, I work on the neutron side and, uh, and the designate team was always available, willing, ready to, to provide all the guidance that, that, uh, that I needed. Yeah. And working with Neutron, I, I can't really talk about that, so. <laughs> Funnily enough, I didn't actually write the first one. I think that was the placeholder where I was going to fill in my, uh, my comments on Neutron, out. but I decided to leave it there. Who in their right mind? <laughs> All right, so Miguel and Carl, uh, obviously the two guys we've mainly been interacting with, they've actually been great. So back in two summits ago, or a sub oh, I can't even remember which one, we, we most recently got together again and hashed out the, the updated Vancouver. spec. Vancouver, yeah, um, Vancouver. Absolutely excited to come along, got them, got them into one of our work sessions and actually managed right then and there to come up with a plan, managed to, to actually do it. We walked out of a work session with a plan. Right. So I mean, that's, a, that's an achievement. <laughs> what, what happened was I walked in and Kyle said, why haven't we done this yet? And I thought about it. I said, I have no idea. Let's do it. Pretty much. 
So Miguel, obviously being the, the driver uh, on the Neutron side, doing uh, a huge amount of the, of the implementation, all of the implementation in Neutron, um, and uh, up refreshing Carl's two-year-old uh, blueprints and specs and getting them up to date again. Uh, he came along every week to our, our weekly RSC meeting, gave us a short update every single week, uh, which was you know, hugely useful to us as we're not, not being Neutron team. We don't see a lot of the stuff that happens in Neutron. It's hard to, to follow. But when, when you have a team who's willing to actually drop out, come out, say, say hi once a week, and give a two or three minutes, here's how far we've got, here's my current issues, let's figure them out. Uh, it was really useful. So uh, I'm not sure what slide is next. Well, with that, I think oh, we can go end. to uh, Q&A, if there are questions in the, in the room. Yeah, we actually have uh, about two minutes for two, minutes? two right, three so, uh, minutes for questions. Yeah, so uh, great talk, thanks. Um, I got two questions. Uh, I noticed that there's an FQDN attribute in the port, uh, but also a domain name in the network. Isn't that potential for conflict? So well, or why is there an FQDN in the port entry? I was wondering. Well, remember that, that once you have the, the DNS domain from, uh, from once, once your DNS domain comes from your network, it, it, it doesn't have to do anything uh, anymore with uh, the DNS domain for, for, for OpenStack. Once you enable that functionality, once you have a, your a DNS domain assigned to your network, it, uh, your, your, your fully qualified domain name is going to be constructed from that. That okay, DNS so then the, the port entry is pretty much ignored. Yeah, and, okay. and, 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 that's, and that's, each tenant can have its own, its own, its own thing. And, and by the way, it's important to clarify that, that the domain name needs to exist previously in designate. Actually, that was my Be next question. Because, because we are, what we want to do is that the domain names used in Neutron are, are authorized, if you like, by the DNS service manager, whoever okay. is managing okay. that DNS. Okay. Because, yeah, you're absolutely okay. right. It might, it might be a source of conflict. Yeah. OK, yeah. thank you. Uh, so if I understood correctly, the um, Neutron side of this is there in Liberty, but the designated integration will be coming in Mataka. Is that correct? Well, the, 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 remember that there's two pieces for mm -hmm. these. There's say, the internal DNS, Neutron DNS. That, that's already in place in Liberty. And the, the, the rest of the integration with Designate is coming in Mitaka 1, yes. Yeah. OK. And um, when that integration is there, like say that someone assigns a domain name, will there be validation against Designate to ensure, for example, that um, that tenant actually owns that domain? Or will that fail at some point later down the road? When you specify a, a, a DNS domain for your flooring IP or for your network, at the moment of pushing that information to Designate, that domain needs to exist. Okay. In, so it'll in, fail in, early. In designate. If it doesn't exist, I return a, 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 right. a, a error code and through the API. Um, <coughs> for things like um, instance names that aren't valid DNS names, does it work the same way that there would be a failure in that scenario? Well, the reason we are using the reason we are using the host name attribute of the instance is because that specific attribute is sanitized to be a valid. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, DNS name. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, hi. This was excellent. Uh, I just want to know, like, with this uh, Neutron port create and uh, other stuff, will it work with heat orchestration as well, or you have any plans to integrate in future, in next releases? In, does it integrate with, sorry, I missed the... Uh, heat orchestration. With uh, the port allocation and the oh, floating port, IP, port yeah. allocation. Uh, I'm not sure if we've really considered it yet. Um, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure yet. Okay. So um, any plans for it? No. We we haven't thought about it at all yet. Uh, it'll be worth pinging us afterward, um, and we can try and figure out what the if we can try and work it in before we land the remaining pieces in Neutron. Uh, in the yeah. next few weeks. Yeah, that's, this is actually good feedback. If you want to talk to us uh, later uh, today or, or ping us in, in IRC, we'll be more than happy to talk about your use case. And yeah. I mean, we are always looking for ways to, to improve this thing. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. 
Right. Thank you. Oh, one more. Oh, is there? So oh, we have yeah. time for one more. Excellent. <laughs> uh, it's actually two, but hopefully um, two small ones. Um, the one is what happens to people who are running um, publicly available IP addresses behind the Neutron router with so uh, SNAT in, uh, disabled? So if you have SNAT disabled on your Neutron router and you're using globally routable IPs there at the moment, they do not get pushed into designate. Um, that is probably something that's a future enhancement. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the yeah. start, when we were dealing with this in the last summit, we, we kind of scoped it down to something that we felt we could reasonably achieve in the, in the cycle. And we so very nearly missed the cutoff uh, mm -hmm. to, to land the full amount in, in Liberty. So more hopefully will come. Uh, so if you have SNAP disabled and you're using globally routable IPs, then that should probably trigger the creation of records out uh, in Designate. Today it doesn't. Mm -hmm. OK, and since you are uh, tying the name to the port, what happens to ports that are not allocated to uh, VMs like router ports and all that? So if I'm not mistaken, you don't limit it to instance ports, so any no. port can be given no, a you name. Can, you, can, you can use the, the, the DNS name attribute can be used for any port. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys very much for attending. And yeah. um, if you have any questions, uh, want to chat to us, come on up. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.